Hey guys, my name is Grim. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the changes in Merkmire, specifically for Stamblade. Um, first of all, I want to talk about some changes to abilities. Then I'm going to tell you about how I've adapted and changed my playstyle, uh, things I've added to my build, um, and then we're going to go over some more gameplay, and I'll walk you through my fights and kind of break them down and show you what's going on and, and how I'm operating this patch. So, first of all, um, the main thing I think that's influenced the change in my playstyle is that there's now a strange cast time on Relentless. So if you are within a certain range, um, it actually increases the time it takes, uh, the travel time, from the moment you cast it to the moment it hits the target. Now, uh, what's good about this change is that it doesn't actually affect the cast time. It's not a channel, which means that you can still dodge roll cancel it. But the issue now is going to be securing enough time that it's not dodged. You want it to land still, and it has this awkward window, um, which is balanced because it does make it really dodgeable, whereas before it was very hard to counterplay. So it's not necessarily a bad change, but it's one that you have to deal with as a stamp blade. Um, the next change, and this is a really strong one for us, uh, is that there's been a huge buff to shuffle. Now, instead of getting... Um, well, you still get major evasion, but instead of major evasion giving you a chance to dodge, it now instead gives you uh, a decrease in damage from AoE abilities by 25%. So a 25% buff against AoE abilities that are cast on you. This is very strong. Uh, what I really like about this change is that before with a random dodge, you couldn't really control it, so it didn't feel good to use, and it didn't feel good to have used against you. If you randomly dodge something, yeah, you most of the time wouldn't even notice, or maybe you did notice, but it doesn't matter because you didn't do anything to earn that dodge. It was random. It was just an RNG dodge, and you may have gotten lucky, or you may have not gotten lucky because you dodged like a light attack instead of something useful. But the point is, it was very um, inconsistent in the type of damage it dodged because, of course, it was completely random and you never earned it anytime you did dodge and if you were fighting someone who was using it um, it always felt like they were dodging your most important attacks and it, it was just frustrating for both sides I, I think people that used it always expected to get a lot out of it and people who had it used against them always felt like it was this huge burden and this is a much better change so it's a flat damage reduction from AoEs and this is particularly great because AoEs are actually a huge source of damage and it's not like smart intelligent damage it's brain dead uh, Zergi damage. So things like um, Dawnbreaker and Spin to Win, uh, these types of things that can pull you out of stealth, that can hit multiple enemies at once, that are very powerful abilities, you're now able to mitigate them a little bit more. And it gives medium armor an edge that it certainly didn't have before. And I think it allows medium armor to compete at a much higher level than it used to be able to. Because now we can resist quite easily. Um, many of the things that, that gave us a hard time. Um, as a stand blade, of course, you have access to major evasion outside of shuffle, but because shuffle is such a useful ability and you need it to break snares, uh, and it means that we don't have to drop rally for forward momentum, so we get to keep high healing, and that's what medium armor is all about. High mobility and high healing because you don't need to rely on heavy. So, uh, that's a huge buff to shuffle. Um, my, my biggest regret is that shade is broken again. So what else is new? But currently, and I've tested this, uh, extensively myself, but I haven't really talked to many other people about it. But if you cast a shade, um, and then drop down a plane, so like you lower yourself down vertically, you can't port back up to it. So this has caused me a lot of grief if I'm jumping off a keep wall, if I'm jumping out of a tower, if I'm jumping over a cliff. I just can't port back to my shade for some reason, and it's like very consistently broken where I'm just not able to port back at all. And I don't know what's causing it, like obviously I'm not the developer, I, I have no idea. I don't know if it's a pathing error, but I can't get it to work if I am below my shade, and it's just, it's a huge issue. So I've dropped it until it's fixed, and that's kind of a shame because it's my favorite ability. But if it doesn't work, it's a waste of space on my bar. Um, the last thing to talk about is the the change to Swift. Swift has gotten a pretty good uh, nerf. It's gone from 10% movement speed at gold to 6% movement speed. I think this is a great change because it, it was a very overpowered trait 
and it disproportionately favored stamina builds that could do well without max stats, uh, just using either proc sets or or other alternate damage sets. And it, it was just so effective and very frustrating. So this is a good change, I think. Um, but it does change a little bit how I'm playing right now. It's still a good trait. Like, it still gives you a lot for what it is because it's just a jewelry trait, right? So it's supposed to do less than... Um, a line on a piece of armor wood in theory like most of the traits uh, for jewelry give you less than you would get from an armor line for instance so like you get 800 stamina instead of 1100 stamina that kind of thing all that being said this is a good change but i go back and forth uh between whether or not i'm going to run it at all so that's right now i'm currently not running it sometimes i put it on i don't know where i stand but it's something to keep in mind. Uh, one more thing is that now shields are affected by penetration. So because of this, I have switched from an axe to a maul. A maul is by far the highest damage 2H um, now. And it always has been the most damage. The problem was that there were a lot of things that it couldn't affect, uh, namely being shields. And then, you know, if someone has below 14,000 resistance, it's not going to be always as effective as like a sword but there's hardly anyone out there that has below 14k resistance especially now that shields are not a valid defense or at least a valid reason to go without resistance so because of that the maul has just greatly exceeded its predecessor in the sword and it's the way to go so the burst that you can get out of a maul is amazing and it scales with the tankiness of your opponent so Guards, for example, which are extremely tanky, are now just so easy to breeze through. Heavy armor people, which there are many heavy armor people now that shields don't work, and it's been a meta for a while. Um, and this maul really helps break through as opposed to a sword or even an axe, which takes some time to chip away. So I switched to a maul. I really like that. Now let's talk about some changes to my actual playstyle. Uh, first of all, like I said, I dropped shade. It's not working. I don't like it anymore. Um, if it doesn't work for me, I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to keep it for nostalgia. So I switched it out for Leeching Strikes. Leeching Strikes is, of course, a really powerful sustainability, and it allows me to do a couple of things. First of all, it heals me. So it means I can, like, now I don't have to rely on kiting as much. So because of Leeching Strikes, I'm able to comfortably go without Swift. Um, Swift is really necessary if you are going to play a super evasive playstyle where you rely on not getting hit. But I'm willing to take a couple hits now because while I'm attacking, I'm restoring a really good amount of health. So um, I like Leeching Strikes for that. It also gives you a really, really solid amount of sustain. And because of that, I can actually drop my uh, sustain glyph on my jewelry um, in favor of damage. So I have switched to Leeching Strikes. I really like that. Uh, the next thing is that I have switched out my Gap Closer for Fear. Now, I actually go back and forth on this change. Sometimes I throw on a gap closer just because it is so fun and so convenient in open world. But particularly in duels and like small scale open world where you're outnumbered uh, and you're running away anyways and you're not gap closing as often, this is a huge benefit to have. Since I'm not using shade, I don't need the magicka as much and I run no magicka recovery at all. So my magicka recovery is incredibly low. But now that I'm not putting down shadow image, I actually have a little bit of spare magicka for mass hysteria and it's been working really well for me um, another reason to use mass hysteria is because of the cast time on relentless because relentless has changed and it now has well i'm sorry not a cast time but a travel time um, being able to combo with fear is really powerful it's at least very helpful and it kind of mitigates that change a little bit and allows you to more reliably land it uh, furthermore the changes to in-cap strike make it so that at 70 ultimate, it doesn't actually knock anybody down. You have to get to 120 ultimate in order to stun anybody. Now, that is a really big change, and it makes Dawnbreaker a stronger option if you're relying on your ultimate to, to knock anybody down. But I don't want to rely on my ultimate to knock anybody down. Um, I used to be okay with that because it was so cheap, but this is not an AoE ability. I can't knock down multiple people with it. I can only knock down one person. So if I'm crowded, it's a big issue. So for that reason as well, I've also switched to fear. So I can use fear to guarantee an in-cap and sometimes guarantee a relentless or at least make it far more likely to hit. 
Um, and I can use one or the other or both sometimes, depending on how quickly someone can break free. So I really like fear. Um, and that's what I've been using uh, for for a while. Now, the last thing I did, like I said, is I changed to uh, higher damage. So first of all, I switched out my Swift. I'm right now running a robust necklace instead of a Swift necklace. I'll probably end up running an infused um, and that will buff my weapon damage. And that will actually get me more damage and more healing. Like I'll get more ability power. I'll have higher tool tips, but it's going to hurt my sustain a little bit um, passively because I'm going to have less max stamina. So I'm going, I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful with how I use my stamina because I'll have less of it to spare. Uh, I can't have as many mistakes happen and I can't just kind of stamina tank through things and just break free over and over and over. So I'm going to try that out, see what I think. Um, it'll mean that I do, you know, more damage and uh, have higher heals. So I don't have to spend as much time healing and maybe I won't have to cast as many abilities, but it's just one of those trade-offs. So I'll probably go between robust and infused. Um, now I'm also running all three damage glyphs. I used to run two damage glyphs and one recovery glyph. No more. Now that I have leeching strikes, I can drop that recovery glyph and add damage. Uh, I still use one protective. Protective is still an incredible trait and I think it's massively undervalued. People don't realize how strong it is. So I really like that. Uh, for anyone who's wondering, I am using double damage health poisons because they're so strong and I have a little bit into Thermoturge to buff my uh, poison injection. And since I use poison injection with the master bow, that's really valuable. I still like a disease glyph on the back bar. The glyph on the front bar is technically a disease glyph, um, or I'm sorry, it's a poison glyph, but I don't really care because I'm using uh, damage health poisons anyways. So that doesn't matter. Um, I still like Troll King the most. I've been playing around with different things, but because my damage or my sets are so oriented towards proc damage, I don't get really high healing tooltips. For example, if I was to run, instead of um, Ophidian Venom, if I was to run Hulking Draugr or Bone Pirate, I'd get much better healing tooltips, but because I don't, I rely on Troll King a lot for my healing, and it's very, very strong. Um, I'm also currently using Artaeum Takeaway Broth when I can. This is a very expensive food, but it's the best food that you can get. It's identical to Dubious, except for that it adds uh, health recovery. I'm still using Dubious Cameron Throne for most things. Um, it's just so much cheaper, but Artaeum Takeaway Broth is without a doubt a stronger uh, food to use. The problem is that it costs between five and six thousand gold every two hours to keep it up and I that just with the amount that I play I'd be ripping through gold so fast so if anyone wants to donate any to me I'd be happy to use it. It is the best in slot item. I'm just kind of too poor to use it since I only PvP. <laughs> I don't have a lot of gold income most of the time. So um, anyways those are the changes that I've made this patch. Uh, I will keep you posted for any additional changes that I make. This is pretty recent. I've been playing around with the patch for a little bit, trying to like fine-tune my build, see what changes are necessary, what I like, what I don't like. So if you have any questions, let me know. And with that, let's jump into the gameplay. This is a fight against about 5 EP over this resource, and there are a few things I really want you to pay attention to as you watch it. Firstly, I want you to pay attention to how I lead into combos, and how I use light attacks and surprise attacks to prepare the way for bigger combos. Pay attention to the way that I use and monitor my buffs so that I always have damage, healing, and resistance up at key moments. Whenever something like an earth gore goes off, I know someone is going to be vulnerable, and I will try to use that time to take advantage of them and kill them before they're able to get that earth gore back up. Um, finally, I want you to pay attention to how sparingly I use my magicka. Because I have like next to no recovery, I only cloak when I think I absolutely need to, and I only fear when I'm ready to do a full combo. So pay attention to that uh, in this upcoming fight, and I hope you enjoy yourself.
Whoa, whoa. Kill these guys. If you're wondering what happened here, we were watching this really good duel that had been going on for a long time. When these AD came in not knowing what was happening and started trying to attack um, our duelist. So we all jumped in and we actually don't know the guy that's dueling, but we all jumped in to save him. Um, because, you know, he's just trying to get a good duel and we were all enjoying watching it. So we took care of those guys and that's just, you know public service announcement don't interrupt good duels however the duel kind of ended in a draw so the DC duelist decided to run away and uh, so in the end I decided to pick up the fight where he left off because wait, wait. I like a good duel so I light attack him and then uh, block jump to show my intent to duel and away we go I'm gonna start by buffing up here and I use a potion right away because I want to have the crit for the heals, and I also want to have the improved stamina recovery because that's really important in a duel. So I'm trying to put a little pressure on. I missed the fear because I get CC'd myself. Um, I get it that time, and I think I have an in cap up, and I totally don't. So I messed that up big time, and uh, I'm just trying to get a little bit of damage on him uh, just so that I can feel out how powerful his armor is. Um, I get him with a good in cap there. Get him with the fear. I'm trying to keep the pressure up, but he's able to use a leap, so he's kind of managed to reset the fight. He's got his resources back because he's a Dragonite. Um, but now I have an idea of how squishy he is, so hopefully I can get close enough to him and stay close enough to him to get a good combo. Now I'm feeling good about it. I get the fear, and there it is. Well, hey, you made it to the end. Thank you again for watching my guide to Stamblade in Merkmire. I'll be sure to keep you updated if I discover anything new or anything changes. In the meantime, feel free to leave a question in the comment section if you have any questions at all. You can also join my Discord or add me in game. If I have a friend slot available, I'm always happy to add people. And in the meantime, be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.